Welcome back to the second video in this three-part series of creating my first KDP uh, through Amazon printed journal. So it's a bullet journal that I was having to rewrite every single time I got a new journal. I was having to rewrite all the little lines and everything like this. So I created one and had it printed through Amazon KDP. And it's available for sale now, but there is a three-part series of the process of creating that journal and um, getting the first version in and then getting the second version in, looking at a brand new cover and seeing what's inside, what I liked, what I didn't like, and, um, and just how it went in general. So welcome to the video and I hope you enjoy. All right, this is it. So, old version. Um, I added sticky tabs to help me flip through to the right sections. I haven't quite got this perfected yet, but this is um, uh, a good solution to easily get to the correct spots. Now, I ordered the next one. Oh my gosh, and it's here. It's here. So. This is the next version and it has a different cover. So the cover is different and um, this was again created in a similar way. I'm really, really excited to see the cover. I hope it, I hope it worked out and I hope the inside pages do as well. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. Yes, this turned out beautifully. I love the cover. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And this is the back. And the back could be a front, but it's perfect. It, I love it. Okay. As you see, this is the binding also all the way through. It is beautiful. Um, it just says made for me. So I just put like the brand name, not anything else. I didn't try to name the pattern or anything like that this time. Um, and it's thicker. It is substantially thicker than the last one. So this is still the same concept. This is a two month planning journal and so the goal was to have enough planning pages for two months and enough journal pages to last two months I can't remember how many journal pages there are but there should be enough I think like two pages per day um, and so as long as you can you average about that this will completely fill all of your needs um, in terms of the journal I also solved the binding issue with the other version and hopefully it works with this version as well. So now I'm going to um, flip the pages, work on the binding, work out the binding I guess you would say, and see if the changes I made to the printing um, took place and worked out or not or if I'm going to have to make adjustments. So here's the cover. Um, and I'm going to actually start in the middle. So, yes, I like that. It's like a dedication page. Start in the middle. So, these are the journal pages. And the way that I did this was I, I broke the binding. Like, the goal was to break, break in the binding. And I'm going to have to see if this holds up with breaking, breaking the binding like this. Because um, it can be hard to do. But, again, without a saddle stitch option... This is the best. This is the best thing I can do, and I can I can order these quickly. I could get them in. Um, it was not a long process. I could order them one by one, um, and I can make changes. I don't have to order a lot and then have to live with the changes. As you can see in the back, we have these different types of pages. Um, there's some blank pages. They're all numbered. Every page is numbered so that you can. Um, this is just the back page. You can put these num these page numbers in the table of contents and flip back through your journal, your two-month planning journal, 
and find what page you wrote certain notes on because you can just jot it down in the table of contents. So no more losing your journal entries, losing that phone number, or that information about a quote for your insurance because you can put it in the table of contents. You know that this covered a two month period. And so if you know that that call that you got was in July, you know that it will be in your journal and you can look in the table of contents for July and find it. And then you have your information from your journal. And so you would just keep these um, and save them like books on a bookshelf. So you can refer back and you can either keep them or whatever you do with your old journals, throw them away, whatever it is. Um, but with these, there's going to be a lot of documentation going on. So fun. Okay, so as I'm doing this, it seems to be working out. Um, working out okay. Now, I did the back half because these were just um, my writing pages. This was a little concerning that it broke, like it broke to this degree, but it's holding together. So that might have just been a natural break. Um, because even though there's not subtle stitch, these are still together in little sections in the the binding. Okay, so we're gonna get to the playing pages now, and I have to just break this in. So I'm gonna do that and review as I go. So I need about halfway. It's harder to do in this section. So with the added pages, this this process of breaking it in is harder. So I really just want it to lay flat like this. I don't want my pages to flip back on me. I want to be able to lay my journal down and leave it in the pages stay where they are. Um, and I want to be able to kind of write over here as close to this margin as possible. Um, so you can see how I'm doing that. It's taking kind of a lot of effort to do. All right, and I'm doing this in sections. Oh, okay, so this page seems to have turned out all right. Um, but you do see the gap here. So Wednesday, Thursday, at least all my days made it in here. And these, this is definitely enough room. So I'm happy with that. Um, yeah. I think this is going to work. So this is weird though. This this part here is definitely weird, um, but I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. I don't really have a a reason to change it too much. Um, I might change it eventually. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because if I did move this lawn over. I could use more space over here. Also, because this is in the beginning of the book, I think um, breaking it in is a little bit harder right now because I broke in the back of the book first. I should have broken the front of the book first. There we go. That, that does it. Okay, good. So now I have more space on the Thursday for writing, and I would actually would really like more space there. Um, it's just that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday have a little bit less room because it's it's four and this takes up a little less room but I've always known that like Saturday and Sunday they really don't they're they're about the right size but Friday can be a little smaller as well and that would give Thursday a little bit more room and then over here I can actually move this over so there's a little bit more room over here um, because I do use this space in the margins as well um, I use the space to write down a couple of like key goals for the week so a thing that if I keep putting it off instead of like having to draw arrows across to send it to the next day I just will like write it over here and say okay if that didn't happen Monday I really don't know if it's gonna happen Tuesday Wednesday Thursday but maybe I'll get to it by Friday but it really has to be done this week it will go right here um, in that margin so this page um not completely happy with it maybe we'll do some adjustments on that All right over here okay okay I know what this is this is this is new this was not in the previous journal um this is what I use for gratitude tracking gratitude and um there's one column for gratitude and one column for um, I call it abundance, but it's 
gratitude for future things, future events, future situations. And so I put gratitude for things that have come to pass and gratitude for things that have yet to come to pass. And so there are seven of these little blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven days of the week. So this will be a set. This goes together. So this will be one week in these two columns. And um, I write down like the date here. So if this is October, I write like October 14th. 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. And so this this ends up being like a sort of calendar space. Um, and I try to write three things that I'm grateful for and three things that um, I'm also grateful for but have yet to come to pass. Um, and then there's space at the bottom too because there was just space. And um, really you could use this grid for anything you wanted. I just wanted to describe how I use it. Okay another grid space this is what I use to keep track of uh, anything really um, but for me it's usually things that need to get done and I break it down into sections of different types of things different categories of things that have to be done so um, I might have one for errands household things things are, that are um, work related or different project related things and then for me, one column is a low effort column and then a high effort column. So if I know that I'm feeling creative um, and I want to work on something for um, um, a special project that I have going on, I know that I need to go to this section and I really don't have much time. I only have 30 minutes or so. My brain is just, maybe it's the end of the day. I want to do something quick and to get, you know, that fast reward for it. So I'm going to go to the low effort column and pick um, one thing off of there or two things if I can get to it. But I'm going to do something off of here. I usually write all this stuff down in pencil and then I can erase it out of out of here. But this is like, um, I use this as a, a menu, a task menu so that I can go. I, I want to do something. I know that my energy level is, a, you know, at a certain battery. Um percentage and so I can gauge like if I'm a low effort or a high effort on the menu and then I, I pick something that's like oh I really need to do one more thing for work versus I really needed to do something from the fun section because it's been a, a long time since I've had fun and if I don't <laughs> if I don't schedule it or pick something off of the list to do that is fun even if it's super low video um, low effort like watching a YouTube video on a topic that I like or something I'm learning about um, that is is for me if I don't do that I won't ever do it I also forget what I want to do I forget what is fun for me and so having it written down like this and getting to pick off of a menu is like like ordering at a restaurant um, I don't remember everything they serve. Um, I need to, even though I go there all the time, like, yeah, there's my, the usual stuff. But um, if I want something different, I still need to look at their menu. I can't, like, be expected to memorize their menu, right? And so, that's how I treat tasks as well. All right, great. So, here is calendar pages. I redid these little block schedules. I am happy with the line spacing. I did readjust this a lot. These boxes are quite a bit smaller than the one in the previous um, edition. Um, also, even though this is a new cover, it's not the whale. Um, in Amazon, I can update the contents. I can update the inside of the journal. So the whale journal is no longer what it was on the first version. I updated that as well because I want um, kind of a standard version of the in contents inside so once I'm happy with the contents inside every journal pretty much will be like that if it's called this if it's called made for me it will be the same thing inside the journal um, if I create a different journal with a different format it will be called something different and so that's how you can pick so the um, the idea is to have the same contents and have lots of different journal covers to choose from because remember this is a two month journal and so I would need six of these per year which I'm perfectly happy with because it's literally made for me um that makes me so happy because it, it is actually what I need and instead of drawing all these grids everywhere all the time 
um, and in trying to do that, I have it all in one place. Um, also, I had an issue with trying to find journals I liked, even though they were plain saddle stitch journals. I wanted the pretty covers for my journals, and I wanted every journal to be different. It was very difficult for me to find um, journals that would have been consistent. So they're all different sizes. They have different numbers of pages. Um, a lot of times I didn't like the color of the lines. It was too dark or it was like blue or green or something like that. And I'm not okay with that. Um, so I wanted the insides to be consistent. And they weren't. And the sizes weren't consistent. That's a little less of a problem. But still, it was really hard because I would have to reformat everything based off the new journal with a new line size. The new size things wouldn't fit in the right places based off of my layouts that I liked and all of that. So this is just perfection to have this option. Okay. So on these grid pages, this is like a habit tracker type thing. Um, I have 31 lines going across. and I think there might be 31 going down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Oh my gosh. So there are exactly 31 lines going down. That means that if you don't really want to use this, this um, number system like this, you can use numbers that go down. Um, and I may do that. So I have two pages where the numbers go across like this and it's possible that I could have it go down. I'm not sure what I want to do. Um, I haven't, my old journal system, the numbers go down and I really like that. But on this one, you have a little bit more space here to write out your stuff or to put your, your tracking information what you're trying to track and you don't have as much space at the top so that means the numbers for me at least sort of have to go at the top and that's why I put them there but still across format um I'm gonna have to get used to that also I mean I know that I'm seeing that the grid sizes are not exactly the same so on 26 it looks to be a problem 31 is also a little bit smaller so um on a future edition I am going to try to correct that. Overall, very happy with this layout though. Okay. So let me flip again. Okay, this is the time chart. And this printed differently. This printed a lot differently than the other. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, but Wednesday can definitely change and if I change Wednesday, I think Wednesday was on the very edge of the margin So if I move the line, I can move the line a little bit I can move it so it's right here, but it wouldn't let me print Wednesday any further this way did not like that it was um, running into the margin Also Thursday, it's kind of be, gonna be hard to write in Thursday So I might move Thursday's line over a little bit make Friday smaller so those are two changes that I'm probably going to make. But I like this. I like this a lot. Um, again, I'm not sure why this printed differently than this. So differently. Um, I'm going to have to check on that. But anyway, it's good. So this is the format for beginning of day, end of day. Because my work day, my day of when I'm moving around and everything usually starts at eight and goes to nine. Um, if I do something earlier than that, it's rare. Everything's good here. Okay, so let's go to the very beginning and maybe start from there a little bit. So I think we've broken enough pages to get there. So there's also these grid formats, um, just larger sections. Um, I use that in a similar way as this, but also um, large projects where there's lots of tasks that have to be get done, um, go here. And I'll also put clear sticky notes sometimes in these spaces so that I can move these from one journal to the next, especially if it's a project where I know that it's going to take me forever to get through this list. So I just make a sticky note of it and I peel the sticky note out and put it in my next two-month journal when I get there because it's obviously going to take me longer 
longer than two months. Um, so that's just one strategy. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy about this. Like, definitely going to go in my gratitude for the day. All right, in the table of contents. So I think this is correct. I'm going to double check this though because I had to alter it from the previous journal um, because I moved some things around. So page four is lists. That's, that's this page. So lists. Um, page six, more lists. So when it says this, it's talking about, it's saying that they're in the same format. These, this is, I have just kind of named this a lists page. And then I have a task, two sets of tasks, or two spreads of task pages. So this um, is again lists, a different type though. So this is a list, a grid that's a little bit different. I explain that. And then 12. 12 is not tasks. 12 is tracking. Um, like a, a habit tracker. 14 is tracking. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this. So even though I'm showing this journal. Um, and I hope you can see it. I hope you can see everything I've done. Um, even though I am showing this journal and pointing out the issues with it I will still have to um I'm going to use it it's not going to go to waste so I'm just going to correct these things so with something maybe didn't upload one two three yeah because there are supposed to be four of these so two types of trackers for each month. So sometimes I track things like symptoms and then I track things like, um, I don't know, it could be anything. Things I've done, like actions versus symptoms or even food, like food and reactions to foods, stuff like that. Okay, but there are only three. So this, maybe the very last version that I updated did not go through. Which sucks. 12. And then 18. That's disappointing. Um, 18 is gratitude. Yeah, this is not the updated. Okay. So, I'm going to figure out what happened there. Um, and that actually, maybe I already fixed this Wednesday issue. So I'm not sure what happened with the upload, but it did not work the way I expected. Um, so maybe the Wednesday issue is, is actually already fixed and, um, it's just not the version that it uploaded. Yeah. Um, so this is great. So knowing that the binding does, uh, break in well, even in, um, this format, it seems, it actually is pretty sturdy. So if I don't think this is going to have an issue with with the bonding but I even when I'm continuously doing this through the book um even when I'm using the book I'm still like breaking the bonding and that's fine like I don't really mind that it's okay it's kind of kind of fun um to do that so yeah um that's it that's it for now so I've gone through the entire journal identified the problems I'm gonna try to make those corrections and upload that next one uh, obviously with a new cover to try out um i was surprised this time this this actually arrived a lot faster than my first version did so the first version um took oh it took 10 days to ship it i don't know why it took 10 days in processing and shipping time um but this one didn't this was just a few days so from the time i uploaded it it was approved and then I was able to order um, and it, the shipping and everything was only a few days. So I'm very, very, very happy about that. Um, I love it. I love the size. I love what it looks like. Um, very excited for the next one, the next cover and to make these corrections. And by the time that these videos are released, we should have a perfected version. I may have like six journals by then. We'll see. We'll see. Um, 
I'll have like a year's worth of journals that are have like slight imperfections. At least the covers will all be different. Um, so just yeah, yeah, you'll you'll get to see the finished version. Um, even though these are actually available on Amazon right now, um, but nobody is gonna know that or see them right now. Oh, such a relief. Um, I love, I love this. This is just amazing that this is even possible in today's, like today's world it is. And it's just, it's, I mean, difficult to, to do, but I was able, I was able to do it. And that's really, really, really cool. Um, because it was just time and learning a few new things using a few programs I already actually had and had really never used before on my computer. Um, but there was no startup cost for it for me because, because I'd already had those programs. They were just sitting there. Um, figuring out the system was difficult, so it wasn't time consuming. Um, but I tend to gravitate toward challenges like that. So, um, in the end, so worth it, and I'm so grateful for it. Keep an eye out for the third video where I show a third cover option and also the finalized contents of the interior uh, portion of the journal and planner.